All right, for this video, we're going to complete example an example again, and we're going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of range, intercordial range, and, and standard deviation as well. Okay, so the following data represents the runs scored by two professional cricket players over a period of 10 games. Uh, this is the same data as in the previous video. So what we're going to do is we, we need to write the numbers in order. Uh, in order to calculate the interquartile range. Actually, you might just calculate the range first because they don't need to be in order for that. So if I calculate the range for Adam and the range for Ben, all I do is go biggest number minus smallest number. So for Adam, that would be 110 minus 0, which is 110. And for Ben, that would be 100 minus 0, which is 100. Now when we do this, we notice that Adam has a bigger range and that could imply that Adam's data is more spread out. And We've spoken about this before. When we calculate range, interquartile range and standard deviation, large numbers mean spread out, small numbers means data is grouped together. Problem being that range is not always a great measure of spread. So let's check interquartile range and standard deviation and see if they come up with similar results. So I'm going to write the numbers down again in order. I'm going to pause and, and then press play. All right, I'm back. Uh, I've put the numbers in order and I've even labeled where the middle or the median is. So we need to find quartile 1 and quartile 3. So quartile 1 is 29 and quartile 3 is 42 for um, Adam. And for Ben, quartile 1 is 10, and the I've just noticed the 1 has gone from the 6, this is 61. So the quartile 3 would be 61 for Ben. Alright, so if we want to find the interquartile range, so interquartile range for Adam and interquartile range for Ben, um, we're going to go for Adam 42 minus 29, which is going to be 13. And for Ben, it's going to be 61 minus 10, which is 51. And what we notice here is that Ben has a much larger interquartile range than Adam. So we can see that Ben's data is much more spread out and Adam's data is much closer together. And we can also see that the range really wasn't very useful here. It really didn't give us a good indication of how spread out the data was. Interquartile range is always better. Okay, next we'll calculate the standard deviation, which also helps give us a measure of spread. Um, you're going to have to do this with the calculator. I've, I've got other videos that show you how to do this. You can look back at, at doing standard deviation there. So I'm going to pause, calculate it, and come back. All right, now for my standard deviation, I went and got the sample standard deviation. The symbol for that is SX on your calculator. So the sample standard deviation for Adam. And I, I want to explain the reason I did sample standard deviation is I thought, well, this was over a period of 10 games. I'm sure these professional cricket players have played more than 10 games. So this can't be the population or the census. It must be the sample. So for Adam, this was a sample standard deviation of 27.9. And for Ben, the, standard de the sample standard deviation came out to 34.6. So we can see that Adam, again, has a smaller uh, number there smaller standard deviation and smaller interquartile range, which shows that his data is grouped close together while Ben's data is spread more out. And it also shows again that the range quite often doesn't work. Okay, so let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of these three measures of spread. First of all, let's start with the range. The disadvantage is that doesn't usually 
give a good measure of spread. Spread. Okay, and the advantages for interquartile range and standard deviation is that they give a good measure. I'm just going to write good measure and save myself some time here. So these give good measures, actually we should write good measures of spread. And the reason they do that is they're not affected by outliers, so we'll write that as well. Uh, not affected by outliers. You can write that under standard deviation if you like as well. Okay, so what's the advantage of range? Quick and easy. It's quick and easy, but quite often is useless. Okay, um, interquartile range, long and tedious to do. Same for standard deviation, it's long and tedious, that's its disadvantage.